Mike and Sandy. Hey guys. Let's just talk briefly and then we'll let you guys get back to work because I do want to give you guys some time to study these problems. Um, so, for starters, hi, happy Wednesday. Thanks for coming, everybody. Appreciate it. You guys had a good week. So, uh, we did these problems. We've transcribed them. We're going to be transcribed. We're going to be getting worksheets of problems every week. We got, you know, 30 weeks work, worth of problems. You know, I'm really happy. They're good problems. I've been scouring the internet. I've got them from all kinds of different sources. Is there sources. any other source for solutions? Is there any? No. There's no source for solutions. I have the solutions, but you guys don't have the solutions. You won't get us the solutions. I will not give you the solutions. I will just tell you if you are right or not. Um, this is this is actually a little bit easier, you know. So so Haley's story is that when she uh, was studying Go, she had to hold out the Go board while she showed the solution to her her teacher. Ah. So if she did not know the whole solution, you would be holding this go board for a very long amount of time. So I mean, you know, it could be worse, right? I could be grading them that way where you have to physically hold the board out for me. But anyway, since y'all aren't here for exercise program, you know, that's, uh, that's all right. So, but why are we doing problems? We're doing problems because they are the single best thing that we can do to increase our ability to analyze the board and to, to read better. Reading is this crucial skill and it's so important, there's almost nothing better. So it's very interesting, modern chess theory about how people teach chess is they say, you know, these ideas of these systems and these formulas and the 12 point plan for analyzing a position, while that is really nice for teaching someone something, that is almost always a post facto explanation. You show a grandmaster a position on the board and they say, oh, this is probably the move. Well, hang on, let me look at it, but this is probably the move. Why do they say that? Why do they start with this recognition? The, the word recognition here is this sort of like at a glance you've got this intuition that that's where the move is and then your conscious brain follows up and starts checking. Now, does this process sound familiar? You see some moves that look like they're the shape point, they're the right point, and then you need to sit down and say, well, does it actually work? You know, and then you read out the sequence, right? Does this, does this make sense what I'm talking about here? So building that capacity, that ability to recognize it, and then to follow that up to go boom, 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 check the moves, is this process that doing lots of problems builds. And doing this is so crucial because, you know, for all that we will have these 12 point plans for how to find the right move to uh, use thickness or finding the right point to attack, most of what we will do is we will do that recognition and we'll check. So one of the things that we do when we do this reading is we talked about the one, two, three reading, which is uh, the youngest sons method whereby you look at the most straightforward thing you can find for one and then you see you know that will suggest if you find a move to refute it for two you try that for one if you can't find something good for two and three works maybe you should try playing three for two does this make sense kind of what you're doing T take turns taking each vital point that you find and you sort of converge <coughs> on what the important points in a position are so there's a great example for that on this week's problem where is my key Great example for that. This week's problem, problem number, let's, let's play. Problem number, which one to think about. Problem number 23 is a great example for this. Problem number 18 is a good example for this, where if you try the most straightforward thing, it won't work. So the next thing you look at, the thing that refutes it, which you will probably see fairly easily, is the one that will lead you to the right answer. Well, I'm looking for something that's even more clear. I said 18, and I said 20, I said 21. Oh, here's one. Okay, so who's got this week's problems, by the way? Who's still needs a copy of this week's problems? The new ones? The new ones. The new ones. Who's got new ones? You need new ones? Two new ones. Here's new ones. Who else needs new ones? Week two. It says week two. Okay. Top, you got them. You need week two? One page, right? It's two pages with a staple. So it's week two. Also, these are already in that Google Drive folder. You can check that out. Anyway, so look at problem number two on this one. Problem number two. Let's take 30 seconds. Let's do problem number two. Okay? 30 seconds. Maybe a minute. Problem number two. Maybe two minutes. Go. And look up when you've got it.
All right, just a minute. Ish. It's almost a minute. Five seconds. All right, who thinks they have the answer? I didn't see anybody look up, so I don't think anybody's got it. But who thinks they have the answer? Now right, let's put let's put this problem on the board because it's such a good problem. This is also a good problem. We're going to come back to this in a second because this is sort of the theme of the of what I wanted to talk about today. But. How many of you guys recognize this problem, by the way? This one over here? It's what I can play? Yeah. Yeah, you recognize it? I've seen it before. Right? That's right. It was long enough ago that I... Then you don't remember the answer. That's my favorite thing. All right, <laughs> great. All right, so let's put on this. What was that? How do I know it's the same? No. Looks like an old Classic shape. Counting on you all to help me make sure that I did put up this problem correctly. If there's anything I will frequently do, just put up the problem by a month. All right. So, so, okay. So, this is a great example of one of these principles that we can use to do our reading methodically, but that will help us to identify key points quickly. So. What was everybody reading? What, what did you look at first? The clamp. The clamp. This is what you looked at first? Yes. All right. I didn't look at this first. Okay. You know what I looked at first? Look at this one. Oh. Why did I look at this one first? Because it's the most trivial move possible. <laughs> it is the first thing that I would think of because it is the trivialest thing that I can think of. It's the principles of first you start by reducing I, I space. Right, right. right? First reduce I space, then play on the vital point. Right? These are those principles of life and death, right? First, make the ice space as small as possible, then find the vital point. Right, so when I read this, the next thing I saw was this, and I'm like, oh, I found a terminal state. This is, a, this is half an eye, and this is two, this is one and a half eyes, I guess. So it's Mia. It's Mia, right, we got Mia here and here. So I'm like, darn, I'm done. So the next thing I started doing was this. And this move, as it turns out, is the right move. But there's a bunch of different variations that you have to check. You have to check this one, you have to check this one, you have to check this one. So what, what's, this one's maybe the trickiest. What's the right way for black to continue? But all of these are sort of, you know, you sort of just follow this yeah. idea tenaciously that you're going to keep white short of liberties, and you're just checking, right? So if white's like, hey, you want to do this now? Then you play. Hmm. Well, now you can play under, and there's a shortage of liberties. Yeah. Like here, this is the hardest one to see is that white can't play here because you'll capture it, right? So, <coughs> excuse me. So what if white plays here instead? Then you play here, being like, aha, I'm going to capture these stones. And you have to check, oh yeah, I can actually capture these stones. How about if white tries this one? Again, we still have to do Atari, and now it's going to extend. Oh, they saved those, but now we can come back here, right? If we try any of these other vital-looking-ish points, we'll quick, quickly find that a white move here will work, right? But the way that we do it, that's, that's maybe the quickest way to start, is doing the most obvious thing, right? The other one that's also the most obvious thing is just taking that eye away directly, and now you're going to be kind of like, oh, hey, yeah, look at that. So there were definitely a bunch of lines that you have to check, right? But seeing this was the, was the first idea, right? So I'm not trying to talk about, you know, systematic methods or, you know, a really expansive system for this analysis. I'm talking about doing lots of problems to train your recognition. And then once you've got this recognition of where vital points are, and you can very quickly see, hey, this is a terminal state, right? Like, acknowledging that, 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 um, that this is a terminal state should be very quick. Shouldn't take you more than a glance to be like, hey, look at that, two eyes. There's a reason why, if you look at, um, so how many of you guys have seen the Sumego that are available on the tesuki sumego.tesuki.org? Have you guys seen this? It's a website. He's got Chochikun's Encyclopedia of Life and Death, Beginner, Intermediate, and Advanced. And like the first 20 problems are variations of 
a whole bunch of stones on the second line. Like the first, I don't know, the first half of it is a whole bunch of things where it's like this, and you know, all the liberties are taken up. Right? And there's this question of, okay, well what if it's like this? And what if it's like this? And what if it's one line longer? And what if there's two hanes? And like, there's like 30 of these problems that are all basically like five in a line, six in a line, seven in a line, with a couple varieties of hanes. And they're slightly different. You can't go too fast or you're going to trip up and you're going to miss that there's some times when you can't descend. You have to play the 2-1 two, the two directly. Anyway, they're great problems. The point is that you start with them early and you drill them so you have that recognition of them. Sound good? So right here, what's the status of this group? Dead. Dead. Even if black plays first? Yes. Right. How did you know? You only, you only have three... Um, stones on the uh, black stones. stones on the second line, which doesn't give you time. Black right. time, even if you move first, you get two eyes. You can do this, you can do this real quick. You can see, boom, done, right? You look perplexed. This is not boomed down immediately. No, that one you was, with me? That this one one was boomed down? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Right. All right. So terminal states are one of these things that it's really useful for us to practice on. So a lot of these problems, you know, uh, where you end up catching three in a line with a shortage of liberties, like Where's the one I'm thinking of here? The first week's problem. Number, number, number. First week problem. <coughs> number 23. Good catching three in a line problem. Oh, uh, number 10. I'm thinking of number 10 specifically. So how many of you guys got number 10 on week one? Week one, number 10. Yes, yes. So this problem is one that we've seen a lot where we have, you know, where we're setting someone up where they they have to try and break an eye here, and they have to try and break an eye down here by playing like this, right? And once you've done this, there are some very predefined paths can follow. That was kind of tricky. What was that? That was kind of a tricky one. It was kind of a tricky one, right? So right now there's no, I can't catch these three stones. This isn't going to work. But if there's some sort of shortage here preventing white from connecting, now I can, right? So knowing from the get-go that something like this will have this placement and now there will be, you know, these points out here will have this Aji. You do this a lot. You know that's there. You know this is not quite an eye yet if you get there. So when you're not even there yet, when you're like here, right? Or you're like, yeah, here. And you're thinking about it. You think, okay, well, I can play here to start getting eyes. And then white, you know, may choose to go like this or choose to go like this. And then it's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, does that make sense what I'm getting at? Okay, cool. So terminal states, what they have to do with this problem. So this problem, who's seen it? All right, so take a few seconds, try and solve this problem. This is black to play, and this is a great example of one of the reasons why uh, seeing the moves and checking them are two very different things, right? How can you become penetrating? So we only have a few points to read, right? We have one, two, three, four points to read because they're symmetric, right? But once you play one, then you have seven to read because then it's no longer symmetric, right? If I play this, now white actually has seven choices, so it's not... The branch factors a little higher. Oh, that was the other thing I was going to say. So the life and death problems are great because we know what the goal is, right? You know I'm trying to kill it. The best play problems are us trying to think about other priorities, where we're looking for what is the best play locally, right? A lot of these end game considerations. How do I get the most points? How do I reduce this the most? Like. These are some of the, the things that we use that recognition to do in a game. We're trying to use our ability to logically analyze a board to then make judgments, tricky judgments, where we're balancing one thing against another thing, right? We know what possible sequences could happen in the future and how we try to make more territory. So, anyway, it's a fun problem. What have we eliminated? Who's eliminated a move, for sure? Somebody's eliminated a move, for sure. Which one? Nobody's eliminated it, for sure. I am simply terrifying all of you to <laughs> cowed silence.
All right, somebody will have eliminated a move and they'll tell me about it any second now, I'm sure, right? Nobody's eliminated, not even one move. I got two good moves. Two good moves, which two? Well, the one at the... You know, on the sixth column on the first line. This one? Yeah. All right. And then the one directly You just below. started reading that one? No, I started reading the one directly below it. You started reading this one? Yeah. And you were able to eliminate it? Uh, actually, no, I like them both. So I've got a problem. Nice. Right. Yeah. Six three is definitely eliminated, right? Six and You've five, eliminated. Three. Okay, you've eliminated this one. Why? What sequence eliminates? Um, one five doesn't. Yeah. Either of these can connect either direction. Yeah. There's no eyes, right? Once we've done this, it doesn't really matter what black tries. I can connect out, and this isn't going to be an eye ever, right? Right? Any 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 objections? Mm -hmm. Anything else black can do after this white play? Any way to get a coat? No, there's nothing, right? So these two moves are right off the table. All right, now we only have three moves left. This one, this one, and this one. So you like this one, George? I did. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to make eye space as small as possible. How are you going to live? Um. Nope, nope. You, 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 are, you, are you convinced that this is a terminal state? Almost. Almost. Why almost? That's fine. So this is the other reason why we drill all of our shapes of yes. bulky five, rabbit six, uh, you know, the Tetris four, all of those basic dead shapes that we recognize quickly, because we can see that once white gets a play here, it's going to be impossible for white and black to make a living shape, right? And similarly, if we do this, no eye. I got me eye to connect. Right? Uh, although we did give white two moves here. Black takes one of these. White opens right here. Right? Black takes this one. White takes this one. Right? We're good? Alright, so now we're down to two moves left. So this one and this one. So who likes this one? Nobody likes this one. Who likes this one? Nobody likes this one. <laughs> so is this a problem with no solution? I could do that. I have been, you know, a dick like that in the past. Have I done that this time? Is there a right answer to this problem? All right, let's start with this one. So I'm going to be do the simplest thing that can possibly work and make the eye space as small as possible. And if you block, I can get a coat. Oh, I don't like coat. That was kind of the case. Hmm. I want to do better than coat. I want to do better than coat for white, but I'm not actually sure if I can do better than coat for white. So what I may be prepared to accept is I'm prepared to accept that a coat for white is the best I can do. And if I'm black, I don't want to stop looking just because I found coat, because coat is kind of the pits. I don't know if I can. Yeah, I'm convinced I can't stop white from getting a coat. Darn! Or can't stop black from getting a coat. Or, yes, after black plays here as white, I can't kill it completely. But, so this one is co. What about this one? I've already eliminated the other two. I got one left. What's my best option here as white? If I play this, this would make a co again. Two, five. Two, five. Two five. White here. Um, <coughs> Oops. Made white white alive. I made black alive. Black captures. Even if white captures, black big captures. Right? So that's not good. So black black's turn, right? It's black's turn right now. So black can play here to live. Because I just played here. Right? Okay, so we yeah. said white here, black here. I can't kill you. Looks like Kogan. So what if I take black's point? Well, now black plays here. And so now my question to you is, I'm white, I'm going to play there. It's black to play. Can I live? Can 
I die? So this is, I'm going to be the first person to admit a trick question. I spent a long time on this when one of my friends showed it to me. It was a very mean thing that he did to me. This is a Seki. I'm going to save you guys from staring at this for a long time. This right here is a Seki. It doesn't look like a Seki. It's actually a Seki. If black plays anywhere, black dies. Black plays here. If Atari, black, white, black captures. White plays here. Black plays here. White captures everything. Right? Black plays here. He dies. Black plays here. He dies. Done. Transposed. Over. Now, if white plays. White plays here. Black plays here. He's going to catch enough stones to live. Right? White plays here, I get four. I'm alive. Ditto. White plays here, I play here, you connect. I'm alive. So this is actually a terminal state, but it's not one that any of us recognize. And that's why we're all having trouble with this problem, is because none of us acknowledge that this terminal state that we're looking at is a seki, because it is a very non-traditional seki. Right? So this is that importance of this is. The reason I'm telling you this is not that, oh god, I need to recognize this when it shows up in my games, because this is probably never going to show up in your games. <laughs> the thing I'm t hoping that you realize is that the reason that this problem that looks fairly simple, it's very symmetric, we should get it right away. Why was it hard? Because the terminal state solution for it is not one that we see and that we recognize. This doesn't lead us to a shape that we can very quickly decide is alive or not. That's how important being able to do that quickly is. Right? That's how important it is that you're doing this and you're getting your practice to do it. Does this, does this make sense, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So this is like, the reason that this has such a very funky terminal state is the reason why it's hard. This is, in a, to turn it around, that's how important recognizing those terminal states is for you when you're reading. So by feeding your subconscious a lot of these patterns, by doing this repetition and feeding your subconscious a lot of these patterns, you're able to recognize terminal states quickly, right, yeah, over here where we have that single eye, you're able to be like, oh, it's dead. It's dead even if I play. And you know it. And you know it, like, right away. Right? Like, so, so doing these problems and drilling this stuff is really useful, important. That's what I wanted to talk about. This is a great problem. Trick your friends. You could even, if you're not feeling mean, you could even just start like this and be like, this is black to play and live. And the answer, of course, is to new. <laughs> so. Sound good? All right, so um, this was a quick, quick, uh, quick little lecture topic, but we had very few people do the homework. So if you guys want to take 15, 20 minutes, do as many problems as you can, and then play some games, that would be great. If you don't want to do homework and you're not going to do what I tell you, that's fine. Just play some games. I'm used to that. You know, eat some paste. We have it served in the kitchen. Kids. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, any other questions? Any, any questions about the homework specifically? We can do a little study group. So Bert and George, you guys did all of them. Some of the folks who were struggling with some of the questions, you want to ask Bert and George. They, of course, know everything now because they did all the problems. So, All right. Have fun. Great. Done. Great.